they said, okay, well, how big would the computer have to be to be able to collect all the information in the universe so that you could figure out which domino was falling next? What they understood is the computer that it would take to do that would be bigger than the universe. What about the idea of future first? Yeah, so future first is a, is a really cool idea. And part of the reason I, I came up with it was because it's really bizarre when you think about time. You know, we, we grow up and we're told, you know, past comes first and we get into future. And, you know, we, we learned in history class, like it was this happened and 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 we have a result, right? And it doesn't matter. I mean, the famous one that every kid knows is, you know, Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated and then we had World War One, right? Mm-hmm. It's like every kid learns about this, how World War One started in, in school. And it was always starting with Archduke Ferdinand, right? It's always this, this, this complicated process of dominoes falling. You know, and, and it's the same, you know, like, like we have winter and we know spring's coming next. And then we know after spring is summer and then after summer is fall and then we get winter again, right? Everything is dominoes. And what I understood is that my experience of life is nothing like that. When, when, I, when I'm going into my future, I have no clue what's coming next. If it was all dominoes falling, why can't I see what dominoes going to fall? And we all kind of go through life this way. And we say, oh, well, hindsight is always 20 20. Well, yeah, that's just an analogy to let us know that this whole thing that past comes first and everything rolls nice, nicely out, it, it's, it's a bunch of, it's, it's a bunch of baloney because there's no way of really understanding and experiencing that. And even the people who are looking at stocks, right, and they always want to determine what's going to be next, they have no clue. Look, our weathermen, our weatherman can't even tell if it's going to rain next week because it's too complicated. And, and it's impossible. There was a really interesting um, study that was done a while ago where they, uh, they said, okay, well, how big would the computer have to be to be able to collect all the information in the universe so that you could figure out which domino was falling next. And what they understood is the computer that it would take to do that would be bigger than the universe. Like, it just, it, so it doesn't work, right? So this idea that this is how we're going to do the thing, it's, it's impossible. So we're following this method that we already know you can't do anything with. And then I started thinking, but you know, when we run projects, and we think if, if past was first, well, then why is done in the future? Done should be in the past, and then you kind of go from done into whatever there is. But it, done is always in the future. And I started understanding, wait a second, for a conscious beings like us, future has to come. I say where I'm going to be for dinner tonight because I said so. And then I live into that possibility. I do a whole bunch of things to get to dinner where it's going to be. I have dinner with my, my girlfriend and my, my son, and we're going to have whatever we're going to have. And if I want to have a pizza tonight, then I'm going to do a whole bunch of things to get there. And then I get there. And then after we eat the pizza at dinner, then dinner's done, right? Future came first because I declared it. And I was wondering, man, I'm like, this seems so obvious to me. Like, this is how we actually live our lives. But wh- where's the science? And I just, I had a whole bunch of science that showed that you can't know, like what, what I told you, that mm-hmm. you can't kind of know what's in the future. But then I got into some of the quantum physics stuff. And okay, like I am not a quantum physicist. I love reading the stuff and I, I know the math a little bit. I don't know the math as well as some of the, I mean, I don't know the math even close to as well as the astrophysicists and the quantum physicists. But there's some really interesting experience, experiments that were done that baffle scientists. And, um, and I, should, I should just put in a video about, at one point, about how it, how it all is. But there's a double slit experiment, which is very famous. It's like, you know, is, is light uh, a wave or a particle? And we find out that it's a wave. And, you know, are atoms a wave and a particle, electrons a wave and a particle? And then you have the observer who comes in and shows that, in fact, it's a wave until you look at it, and then it collapses and it becomes a particle. And, okay, that's one thing. And then there was another really interesting experiment that was done called the quantum eraser. And what they did is they wanted to cheat this experiment. And so they, they kind of split one particle that were entangled, and they went down, one hit the target, and then the other one went down, and it was either measured or not, right? And then they, so they didn't know. So when this one hit the target, it didn't know if it was going to be measured or not measured. And what they found is, if in the future it was measured, then the particle back here had hit the target as a particle. But if it was not measured, it hit the target as a wave. So it was like what was going to be in the future impacted the past on the quantum physics level. Now, this is like a big problem with causality and and all this stuff. But I'm like, what if there's something there? Like, Like, what if this is connected to consciousness somehow? And we don't understand it yet. But what if future first is a possibility? Like, what if the, the fact of declaring a future and then living into it 
what if it's something that conscious beings can do? This is part of the stuff that we just don't understand. And then I realized, okay, well, there's some science there that suggests maybe this is a way that time could work. So my experience of is that it works that way. And there's a suggestion that maybe this is one of the ways time works. So what if we can declare a future and then live into it? And, you know, if you look at, for example, John F. Kennedy, right? He said, you know, we're going to put a man on the moon and bring him back to Earth safely. Nobody had ever, we didn't put a person in space. We didn't even, we didn't even know how to build, build the things to get there. We had no background. There was no past that could determine that the next thing we were going to do come, go to the moon. None. We didn't have the materials. We didn't have the science. We didn't have anything. Right? We didn't even know, at the time, NASA didn't even know who the engineers were who could build such a thing. Like, they, they knew nothing. It all started with a declaration. And then they created the process to make that thing so. It wasn't, from, from his declaration, you couldn't have said that the past could have dictated what that next step was going to be. Mm. And so, wait a second. Like, there's something really there important for us. Something that we should understand and, and be aware of and at least consider. Because there's so much power in that. 